Hello Foundry. My name's Brandon. I'm the family pastor here and this is my wife Hannah. Hi. And we're excited to be introducing a new video series that we're going to be doing over the next week leading up to Easter. It's Foundry's Holy Week devotional. Every day leading up to Easter, we're going to be putting out a new five-minute devotional video to help you uh, get your heart prepared for Easter. There's a lot that happened in the week leading up to crucifixion and the resurrection on Sunday, and it's amazing to see them in order, what happened on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, because this is a very full week where Jesus was participating in so many different things, from mm -hmm. casting out the money changers in the temple to cursing a fig tree to the Passover and the Last Supper with his disciples. And so it's so inspirational to be able to see these in order. And our prayer for you is that you are able to put these together and have these small devotionals, get your heart ready for a, a worship service on Easter Sunday of the risen Christ, having seen all of the things that he went through in Holy Week. Um, and so today we're talking about an event that happened on Monday. And this event is sometimes called Jesus's anointing at Bethany or when Mary anointed Jesus' feet. And so uh, we have some amazing thoughts on that. And so uh, Hannah, uh, what do you got for us? So today I'm gonna read out of Matthew 26, verses six through 13. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, she, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So I love this passage. This is one of my most favorite passages in all of scripture, and it happens to be in all four gospels. Um, it's one of our daughter's favorites as yeah. well. <laughs> and um, I love in this passage that Mary seems to accept two seemingly conflicting things that the other disciples really didn't seem to be able to accept both of these at the same, at the same time. First, she accepts that he's God, as disciples would. Jesus is God, right? And um, this is clearly seen by Jesus accepting this act as an act of worship. It's an extravagant sacrifice, right? To the point where the disciples are even irritated with her for wasting money on Jesus, which seems kind of crazy. And he says, she's done a beautiful thing for me so much that he wants what she's done to be told as part of his story. He feels like this is so... Um, important to his story of what he's doing on earth that he wants this repeated everywhere and thus it being in all four gospels and uh, but she also accepts something that seems to be in conflict with him being God she accepts that he's going to die and the other disciples really couldn't accept this most famously Peter pulling Jesus aside and saying Jesus stop talking about how you're gonna die <laughs> you can't keep talking about that but she accepts that and she is using this perfume that was used for, for bodies, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus says that um, she's preparing his body for burial. But she does not see that at all to be in conflict with him um, being God. And she seems to remember something that he previously had said to her. He says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Yep. And... Um, Right now, it just seems really applicable because there's so much suffering and death on a global scale. But if Mary could accept that Jesus was God, even before the resurrection, how much more can we accept Jesus being God, having known, having recognized and believing in the resurrection? Yeah, yep. well said. I love that it is Mary, the friend of Jesus, the brother of Lazarus who was raised from the dead, she was the one who got it. And before he went to Jerusalem on the next day on Tuesday, she was the one who said, he's gonna die, he's gonna come back. It wasn't Peter, it wasn't any of the men, it was Mary. 
a woman who got it first. And I think it echoes on the Resurrection Sunday when mm -hmm. the women go to the tomb and they, they see the resurrected mm -hmm. Jesus. I just, mm -hmm. I love that. And my daughters connect so much to this passage. So we're so happy that we got to share uh, Monday with you in this amazing passage. And so our mm -hmm. prayer is that you reflect on this and that your heart becomes more and more prepared to worship him when we celebrate the resurrection on Easter. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Bless you.